the great saga of human evolution continued with the emergence of a new genus named Homo some 2 million years ago in Africa. The first two species of this genus were Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis, who evolved from Australopithecus afarensis. The identifying characteristics of the Homo species were having larger brain, being completely bipedal and developing ability to make tools. With reduced jaw, teeth and body hair, they started appearing more like modern humans. Soon they were going to become the first early humans to migrate out of Africa. They migrated to Middle East, Europe, India, China and Java. Hi friends, welcome to the part 4 of the series Hominins to Humans. In this part, we are going to study 7 species within the genus Homo. If you have not watched the first 3 parts yet, I highly recommend you to do so. I am giving their link in the i button and also in the description. This video series caters to the topic 1.6 of the UPSC Anthropology Optional Paper 1. This video focuses on the genus Homo. The timeline of the genus Homo begins some 2.5 million years ago from now. We modern humans too are members of this genus Homo. On your screen you can see the timeline of different species under the genus Homo. All Homo species are shown in the bars of green color. You can see that several Homo species coexisted with Australopithecus and Paranthropus. The first Homo species to evolve was Homo rudolfensis who lived between 2.4 and 1.8 million years ago in Africa. Almost at the same time Homo habilis arose between 2.3 and 1.4 million years ago also in Africa. Homo erectus was the longest living Homo species who lived between 1.9 and 0.1 million years ago. There were three different types of Homo erectus subspecies who lived in three different locations in the world. Homo antecessor and Homo heidelbergensis were two other Homo species who lived in Europe. After evolving in Africa, the species of genus Homo spread to the highlighted areas of Africa, Europe and Asia as shown in the map. The out of Africa migration was a slow process that started with Homo erectus and continued for almost 2 million years. Species of the genus Homo underwent some anatomical adaptations which included increased cranial capacity and morphological changes to face, pelvis, arms, legs, hands and feet. The brain capacity of all Homo species was 700 cubic centimeter or more. Changes to the pelvis bone, foramen magnum and the bones of legs, feet and arms made them efficient bipedal. The bony ridge at the front and the rear of the skull protected them from serious brain injury on fall. Walking on two feet freed their hands. This combined with the increased brain power enabled them to devise some tools out of stone, wood and animal bones. The tools made them superior hunters. They were also used for extracting meat and bone marrow from dead animals. Some tools were used to crush seeds, break hard nuts and extract tubers from ground. The uses of tools made them starkly different from all other animals including apes. Tools ease the burden on the chewing apparatus in their body right from teeth and jaw to the digestive system. This resulted in reduced size of jaw and teeth. Early Homo erectus made an amazing discovery of fire. They observed the naturally occurring fire and learned how to keep it burning by continuously supplying dry leaves and wood to it. The process of igniting fire was learnt much later. Fire provided safety from wild animals. It was also used to cook food. The cooked food was not only easier to digest but it also killed parasites in it. It had a strong positive impact in the overall quality of life. More animal fat was great for the development of brain which kept getting bigger and better. Invention of tools and control of fire allowed them to spend some time together caring for their children and also the aged members. They also developed some rudimentary language which helped in coordinated hunting and passing on information. They started following some rituals around burying their dead family members. Bipedalism, uses of tools, control of fire and agriculture were the major milestones in the evolutionary process. On the screen, you can see the timeline of these milestones and also the species who were instrumental in achieving them. Bipedalism was partially practiced by Ardipithecus and Australopithecus but it was the genus Homo who perfected it. Uses of tools began about 2 million years ago and Homo habilis are given credit for it. Homo erectus was the earliest species to control fire some 300,000 years ago. Agriculture came much later. It is the species of Homo sapiens who learned farming some 12,000 years ago. So far in this video we have discussed the evolutionary adaptations at the genus level. Time to see the role of individual species within the genus Homo in human evolution. Let's begin with Homo rudolfensis. The name of the species Homo rudolfensis is based on Lake Turkana in Kenya where its fossils were discovered in 1986 by Richard Leakey. At that time Lake Turkana was known by the name Lake Rudolph. 
Homo rudolfensis lived in a relatively cold and dry grasslands of eastern Africa and are assumed to be bipedal. They had some residual ape characteristics like thick body hair and large molar and premolar teeth, but they possessed a large brain of 775 cubic centimeter and small bro ridges. They were about 5 feet tall, weighed about 55 kilograms and ate mainly plant-based food. Homo habilis The timeline and place of living of Homo habilis is similar to that of Homo rudolfensis. The word habilis comes from Latin, it means handy or skillful. Homo habilis is the earliest species of humans who is known to be using tools and that's why they are called handyman. Homo habilis may be our direct ancestor. On the right panel of your screen, you can see the height, weight, brain size and diet of Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived in a predominantly grassland environment and they spread throughout the African continent. Homo habilis had some leftover ape body features like proportions of their arm and leg, large incisors and slightly curved fingers. But they had more human-like characteristics. These characteristics include small bra ridges, small jaw, smaller molar and premolar teeth. Fingers of their hand had precision grip like humans and they were regular bipedal like us. Their fossils were discovered by Louis and Mary Leakey in 1960 in Tanzania where a fragmented skull, a lower jaw, partial teeth and some leg bones were discovered. Homo erectus Homo erectus were one of the most important early human species for several reasons. There are many firsts associated with them. They were the first species to use fire. They were the first to migrate out of Africa. Probably they built the first boats to cross sea to reach Java. The first artwork in cave is also attributed to them. There are strong evidences suggesting care for sick members in their group. On top of all of these, they were the longest living human species who lived for more than one and a half million years. In comparison, we Homo sapiens have lived for only 0.3 million years. Since they lived for such a long period, they coexisted with Australopithecus and Paranthropus in the beginning of their timeline. They even coexisted with our own species of Homo sapiens before being extinct some 0.11 million years ago. Homo erectus were generally taller than us and hence they are aptly nicknamed as the upright man. Their brain capacity was 1050 cubic centimeter or more. They had sparse body hair. With athletic build and high endurance, they could run for long duration. They still had some remnant ape features like massive bra ridges and flat broad nose but they had small dentine. They ate large amount of meat supplemented with plant food. There wasn't significant difference between the size of male and females. Homo erectus migrated from Africa and that's why there has been three subspecies of Homo erectus which are found in three different geographical regions, Africa, China and Java. Based on their place of living, these three subspecies are named as Homo erectus ergaster, the African Homo erectus, Homo erectus pekinensis, the Peking man and Homo erectus javanicus, the Java man. Let's learn about all these three Homo erectus species. Homo erectus javanicus fossils were among the first ever fossils discovered. Eugene Dubois discovered javanicus fossils in 1891 in Java, Indonesia, where he found some skull cap, thigh bones and teeth. In 1921, Johan Anderson and Otto Jodansky found Homo erectus pekinensis fossils in Jokodian near Beijing, China. In 1949, John Robinson discovered Homo erectus ergaster fossils in South Africa. Homo erectus javanicus lived between 1.8 and 1.5 million years ago in Java Island. It is also known as the Java Man. Its cranial capacity was about 900 cubic centimeter. Homo erectus ergaster lived between 1.9 and 1.4 million years ago in East and South Africa. Its name ergaster means work in Greek. Homo ergaster got this name because some stone tools were obtained from its fossil site. For the same reason, ergaster got the nickname of workman. Homo erectus pekinensis lived in China near Beijing between 8 and 2.500 thousand years. Its name is derived from the old name of Beijing. Pekinensis brain was more developed than that of Javanicus and Augustus, which is natural considering its timeline. All the three Homo erectus used to eat mainly meat supplemented by plant-based food. You can see the artistic impression of their appearance on the screen along with their height and weight. One important point about Homo erectus pekinensis was its small chin compared to others. Homo antecessor is the oldest Homo species found in Europe. Antecessor is a Latin word which means pioneer or early settler. And because of this, the species was named antecessor. They lived in Spain and England regions between 1.2 and 0.8 million years ago. Phylogenetically, they are supposed to be a descendant of Homo ergaster and the ancestor of Homo heidelbergensis. They appeared very much like modern humans with projecting nose, reduced dentine and height and weight similar to us. Archaic traits in them were low forehead, double bra ridges, small chin and slightly smaller brain than us. Their diet was predominantly meat supplemented with plants. 
They lived in a climate that was generally warm and humid with warmer, cooler shifts. They had rudimentary speech capabilities. They probably practiced cannibalism, but this fact is debated. They used different type of tools made of stone, wood and bone for hunting, extracting meat and digging ground. Udal Carbonell discovered Homo antecessor fossils in northern Spain in 1994 where he found some upper jaw bones and skeletal and cranial remains. Homo heidelbergensis fossils were first discovered in Heidelberg, Germany and hence the species was named Homo heidelbergensis. They also lived in Africa. The African fossils are older. They lived between 0.7 and 0.2 million years ago. They were the first early humans who adapted to live in colder climates. Both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthals diverged from Homo heidelbergensis between 400 and 350,000 years ago. The European population of Homo heidelbergensis evolved into Homo neanderthals and the African heidelbergensis population evolved into Homo sapiens. Heidelbergensis had large brain case of 1250 cubic centimeter. They had a flatter face with slightly projecting but broad nose, sloping forehead and double arched brow ridges. The lower jaw did not have protrusion and they also had pointed chin. Their teeth had parabolic shape and were smaller than the earlier species but were bigger than ours. Their height and weight was similar to us. They ate meat of large animals. They also ate plant-based food. Let's talk about the Homo heidelbergensis culture. Homo heidelbergensis spread out of Africa and they established their settlement in Europe. By 500,000 years ago, they had populations in different part of Asia as well. There are sound evidences of their control of fire. They used wooden spear to hunt large animals. They also used scrapers and hammers. In France some shelters made of wood and rock have been discovered near their fossils. They were a social group who shared food and information. The Heidelbergensis population living in colder regions of Europe might have worn clothes made of animal skin. The fossils of Homo heidelbergensis were discovered in 1907 in Heidelberg, Germany, where a nearly complete jaw was found. Later a skull was found in Zambia in 1993. A skull and a lower jaw was found in France in 1963. In Spain also the remains of six individuals were recovered having discussed the seven species of genus homo it is the right time to end this video there are two more parts left in this series in the next part we'll be discussing homo neanderthals and rhodesian man and in the sixth and the final part we'll be learning about homo sapiens hope you are enjoying the series see you in the next video bye